Number 46. Find the resistance that must be placed in parallel with a 25 ohm galvanometer having a 50 milli amp sensitivity to allow it to be used as an ammeter with a 10 amp full scale reading already. So basically what we have to do is create a little picture first they ask. So let's just pretend we have this little apparatus here and this thing will represent the galvanometer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to draw in the little G in there. All right. And when the current now passes through this galvanometer and they basically told us the current that's going to pass through it, they said it's going to have a a 50 uh, micro amp sensitivity. So you know that we're going to need that in terms of amps. So just simply take the 50 and multiply it by 10 to the uh, minus sixth, okay, to get it into amps. We also know the resistance inside of this galvanometer. They told that to us. It's simply going to be, so I'll call it R sub G, it's simply going to be 25 ohms. And now what's happening is they're asking us what kind of resistance has to be placed here, essentially. So what I'll do is I'll just erase this little area and we'll draw a little resistance in there like that. All right. And they want us to now calculate this particular resistance. But they also said that it, uh, this galvanometer has to be used as an ammeter so that it measures basically, you know, a uh, or it would register, you know, some particular um, some particular current on it when 10 amps of current flows through. OK, 10 amps. So I'll call this I. 10 amps of current flows through and it's going to flow through this wire right here. OK, so what we realize now is the important feature of the parallel circuits is that the voltage now supplied over the galvanometer will equal the voltage supplied over this resistance. OK, in other words, the voltage supplied over the resistance inside the galvanometer will equal the resistance supplied over, excuse me, the voltage supplied over this particular resistance. So what that means, if I want to call this all, you know, R1 and R1 or I1, uh, what we realize then is that V1 must equal, uh, let's say, VG, okay? That the two voltages have to be constant. So this is the blue one and this is the red one, okay? So from here on out, I'm going to, you know, be loose on the colors now, uh, but just note that everything I'm plugging in here will be for R1, all right? or uh, I1, and then the same for the red will be for the galvan galvanometer. So now what I'm going to do is substitute in basically Ohm's law. So remember V is equal to IR, VIR. So instead now of V1, I'm going to write in I1, R1, okay? And instead of VG, I'm going to write IG, VG. Now what do we want to find? We want to find R1. So how do you solve for it? Simply cross multiply or divide out, in other words, the I1, right? Boom, there it is. And look, Here's the formula. Do we, know, do we know all of those three pieces over here? Of course we do. The current flowing through the galvanometer, they told us was 50 times 10 to the minus sixth amps. The, uh, why did I have a V there? That should be an R, sorry guys. So that should be an RG. The resistance of that galvanometer, they told us was 25 ohms. And then divide that now by the current flowing through the uh, R1, which was 10 amps. Take out that handy dandy calculator and it's going to be 50 times 10 to the minus 6th, multiply by 25, divide that now by 10, and it's going to be 1.25, 1.25 times 10 to the minus 4th, and that'll be in terms of ohms, right? So it'll be about 0.125 milli ohms, all right? And that's that. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully that helped. If it did, help us out. Hit that like button, subscribe, tell your friends. We'll see you soon. Take care.